Hi there, and welcome back to John's Watch Shot. Now, there's a good few of you out there who thought you'd never hear those words again. That was never the case. I just needed a break. Two years and a video every three days. It does take it out of you, especially in the creative process. And I'm not a creative person. I find it quite difficult. So, great to be back. What's been happening in Watchland? Well, a lot of new releases on AliExpress, which I have missed. However, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some new releases for you for the new AliExpress sale. Go figure, yet another AliExpress sale starting tonight on the Sunday night. So, let's get into some new releases. As ever, make sure you follow the store. Make sure you look after your codes. Make sure you have all those codes to hand. And then you can apply them all in your basket. Get them in the basket before the sale starts. Now, today I'm going to concentrate on these new releases. But at the same time, I'm going to leave links to other watches in the description below. Watches that I think merit your attention. And out of all these new watches today, of course, these are brands that I know, I love, and I respect. So I'm not going to steer you in the wrong direction. So, without any further nonsense, let's get on with it. And if Molly doesn't shut up, will you just leave me alone? Yes, I'll get your din-dins in a minute. Some say it's never change. Yes, as you can tell, Molly still rules the roost here and forever chasing after her. The first watch up today is from Addy's Dive. It's the Addy's Dive AD2063, a GMT watch with very familiar looks. You'll have seen this look across other watches, including Sam Martin, etc. This has a Ronda 515 24-hour quartz movement inside it. We've seen it in other Addy's Dive watches. This is 38mm in diameter at the bezel, slightly larger than that at the case, 47mm lug to lug and only 12.3mm thick, wears nicely on the wrist and has a 24 hour fixed bezel so you can try a couple of time zones. It does have the appearance of these other watches but it does do its own thing as well. Of course it's made from 316L stainless steel including the bracelet but the clasp itself is pressed but it does have a 5 micro adjustments. It has a sapphire crystal, a screw down crown and 200 meters of water resistance with some really nice finishing on it here including lovely polished chamfered edges along the top of the flanks there, semi twisted lugs and a lovely set of Dauphine hands and what looks to be a blued style GMT hand. A very well appointed watch and it's 61 pounds or 76 US dollars excluding taxes of course it looks to be a nice little watch. So that's the first watch today but my full review will follow. Next up we have the watch that is WD 1967 version 2 with a slimmer case and less dial distortion than the original. I was attracted to this watch as I liked the version that Addy's Dive did a few months back but some complained there was too much blue AR coating on that crystal. If that was the case then this might be your better option if you like the look of that one. It's a 300m dive watch housing the Seiko NH35 automatic movement which makes sense as it comes in both a date and no date version. You can get it with white indices printed on the dial, with BGW9 Superluminova, or 14 are coloured indices with C3 Superluminova. Also offered is a big triangled version. Specs include a domed sapphire crystal with a good AR coating, a 120 click unidirectional bezel with a hard lex insert, which is a strange choice but it works well, but it does have a rather good on the fly adjustable clasp paired with an excellent bracelet. The finishing here seems to be of a very good quality with lovely polished chamfers and the mid case has been thinned out nicely so it is lovely to wear and it is a really solid choice especially with dimensions of 39mm in diameter, 45mm lug to lug and 13.2mm thick. The lug width is a standard 20mm but it does have a lovely taper to it. This is a very solid well put together watch and for the price I think it represents good value. Alright let's go to the next one. Now this next watch by Militado was a pleasant surprise for me. It's a very simple military style piece that just gets the basics right. For the longest time the escapement time version of this was your only option until Millifortic came along and had a go. But this ML08 gets it 90% right and for the price you could argue it's as good as you'll get. Everything looks in proportion and the colours and the indices and hands blend well together. In other words, no overly long lug lengths and no garish bright hands. The watch is powered by the ever popular Seiko VH31 sweeping quartz movement and it will please many and helps to keep the watch thickness to a minimum. The dial is a matte black and the printed indices are ultra legible and in addition there is no extra clutter, just a simple logo above the pinion. The brushing is simple and well executed and a well sized screw down crown ensures 100 meters of water resistance. Importantly, it's grippy and easy to operate. The case back is simple 
and will allow easy access for battery changes in the future, but importantly, for a military-style watch the dimensions are just right. 38mm in diameter, 44mm lug to lug, a lug width of 20mm and the watch is only 10.6mm thick, so you'll get it under a cuff or a jacket no problem at all. The nylon strap will do a turn and it's inoffensive, but this watch is definitely a strap monster. The Polish crown is strange but it does blend with the Polish bezels, so I've got no real complaints there. The sapphire crystal used here is of a very good quality and it's slightly domed, which is the right choice here. Reflections are kept to a minimum, but that's not all. As you can see, the C3 loom does a far better job than I expected. Very clear and well applied, and it does last a good amount of time. To be quite honest, for £43 or $59 US dollars in the sale, this watch is an absolute bargain. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have another diver, but before you let out a groan and see you've seen it all before, just hear me out. This is the new Watch Dives WD7922, so what's different? Well, for starters, it's a light watch, and it's not chunky, and that's because Watch Dives have also seen the light and have used the Seiko VH31 swooping quartz movement in this one. I think it's a good move, as its counterparts all look slab-sided in comparison and could do with losing a little weight. In essence, the beauty of this watch is its simplicity. It's a proper grab-and-go watch that can be used anywhere in a pinch. At only 116 grams with three links removed, it feels very nice on the wrist indeed. Sure, it might not have the bells and whistles of its heavier brothers and sisters, but I don't think it's too much of a compromise. Like the other watches I've shown you today, it doesn't have screw links, but it does have a proper clasp with four micro adjusts, and all that for £78 or $94 US dollars in the sale. What you do get though are five colour options, a sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating, a 120 click unidirectional bezel with a matte aluminium insert, a loomed bezel pip, a screw down signed crown and a screw down case back, which should ensure 200 metres of water resistance. In addition, you also get either C3 Superluminova or BGW9 Superluminova on the hands, indices and the loom pip depending on your colourway. The watch is of course made from 316L stainless steel and that includes a solid oyster style bracelet, tapering from 20mm to just under 16mm at the clasp. The new factory is also doing a great job of finishing these watches, showing a high quality of brushing and a very decent polished chamfered edge on the top edges of this watch, and I have to say the bezel is also a real pleasure to use. The handsets used are premium looking and the loom application is very consistent, as you can see, resulting in excellent low light legibility. I will say though this watch is for the smaller wrist with dimensions of 37.7mm in diameter, 45.4mm lug to lug, and a lug width of 20mm, and as you would expect, the thickness is only 11.5mm with the inclusion of the Seiko VH31 movement. To be quite honest, this watch is neat, tidy, uncluttered, and it should be on your radar. Alright to watch number 5 then. As you know, I always have an outlier in my videos, and today that outlier comes in the shape of the Welly Merck World Timer. Not a real world timer by any means, but it is a bit of a looker, and it'll get you noticed. Whilst on holiday, Willie Merck reached out to me, and I was looking at it anyway, so I just had to get it in. So thank you to Willie Merck for that. I do believe, though, that the brand name and the logo may soon change, but I haven't had any confirmation of that yet, so we'll see what happens there. It is a well-proportioned watch with the following dimensions. Diameter, 41mm, lug-to-lug, lug, 525 including those male end links, lug widths 20mm and a thickness of 12.1mm. The movement is a Miyota 8215 automatic movement as you can see via the display case back and the watch weighs 137 grams with 6 links removed so it is quite a heavy watch. The watch does have a flat sapphire crystal and have a mixture of brushed and polished surfaces which are redolent of the finishing you find on an Orient Kamasu, in other words a little softer than the norm. It's been done well and the 5 link bracelet articulates nicely and even on my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist it's not overly big. The bottom crown is for adjusting the time and it's a push pull whereas the top crown adjusts the inner bezel allowing you to look at a second time zone. The dial on the hands are very stylized and it's a real looker. The watch is a butterfly clasp and I miraculously found it fits me really well for a larger piece. The party trick with this watch though is the loom on the dial. It is absolutely awesome. In the sale, the watch can be had for as little as £68, depending on your choice of case, strap and dial. It's a really cool watch, and I promise I'll do a full review on it very shortly. 
All right, so that's the first five watches, and that's the last of the physical watches I have here. If you like the content here, and you like the way I do things, please remember to subscribe, because it really does help the channel. All right, let's have a look at three other watches I think you should be looking at, starting with a new release from Boltony. This is the S202076 Khaki Aviation Homage, available in three colorways. Black with a white ceramic bezel insert, black with a black ceramic bezel insert, and white with a black ceramic insert, which is the pick of the bunch for me. Size-wise, you're looking at 38mm in diameter, 43.4mm lug-to-lug, 20mm in lug width, and a thickness of 12.6mm. As you would expect from Boltony, they have the correct movement, and this one is the Seiko NH38 automatic movement. Plaudits to Boltony for doing it right yet again. The bezel on this one is bi-directional, it doesn't say it clicks at all. You have a sapphire crystal with an AR coating on it, and we all know how good Boltony's crystals are. I can't wait to see this one. Dials are of a matte finish, and they're textured too. Lume on this one is C3 Super Luminova, and the hand styles are polished cathedral style hands. We have 100 meters of water resistance, and the watch is brushed and finished. This thing looks absolutely awesome. This looks to be a very accomplished watch, and at the price you can see on this screen there, I think that represents excellent value in the sales. I personally think this is one of Boltony's better releases in recent days, and judging by the numbers sold, I think that is the case. Next up is a watch from Thorn. It's their version of the Marine Master 300 with the In Vogue Wave style dial. There are five options to choose from with this one. I should have had one, but Thorn decided not to send me a review piece as they weren't too happy with my last Blancpain homage review. Well, I can't help the text they put on the dials, but maybe they'll stop being in a half after a wee while. Anyway, I like the Fumi Red version of this one. The model number is SHY042. It comes with a sapphire crystal. 200 meters of alleged water resistance, BGW9 Super Luminova on the hands, indices, and the loom pip. It's 40 millimeters in diameter, so it should fit most wrist sizes. It's 13.6 millimeters thick, but that's including the crystal, and it has the Seiko NH35 powering it. It doesn't look too bad, and Thorn do do a good job of their finishing, if not their spelling, but £109, it's not too shabby. Alright then, this is the last watch on my recent and new release list. This one is from Addy's Dive, and you can see they're trying to capitalise on the success of the AD2030 with the VH31 movement. It was very popular, but at 37mm it was small for some. This is larger at 39mm, and it has a more mature logo, and the more current bracelet also. This one is the AD2059. The full specs are 39mm in diameter, lug to lug 48mm, a 20mm lug width instead of 19 13.5mm thickness, including a domed sapphire crystal with AR coating, and that is really what was required here. In addition, this is powered by the Seiko NH35, and it has a date complication at the 3 o'clock position. A screw-down case back and crown should ensure a water resistance of 100 meters. It is available in three colours that are definitely on point, and it really is a dress gada. And I tell you what, I don't see why this won't sell by the bucket load at a sale price of £70 or $91. US dollars. It looks cool, I think it'll wear very well, and Addy's Dive do these watches extremely nicely. Really well appointed little watch this one, another one for your list. So that is my list of new releases. Please don't forget, all the links are down below, plus a link to lots more watches I think you should be having a look at as well. So it's not just these 8 watches today, there are plenty more down below for you to have a look at. Alright guys, happy watch hunting, it's great to be back. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and I will catch you again on the next one. Ta-ra for now.